Okay, uh, so we are going to go back quite a bit until we got into um, forces. So that should have been... right around here the 11th so here we talk about mechanical equilibrium so mechanical equilibrium is pretty much when we have the sum of forces acting on an object that add up to equal zero and then this worksheet here uh, it's the FBD free body diagrams all right that gives you the date so with this one okay so the rule is you have a force is a push or pull. We measure it in newtons. So two objects or two forces in the same direction. For example, if this was five and this was seven, same direction you'd add them. So this would like become the net force of 12 newtons to the right. We use arrows to represent our force vectors. If you had seven to the right and five newtons to the left. This would be telling me I have a net force of two newtons to the right. Now, in this worksheet here, what they're asking us for, um, they've got to figure out what are the blanks have to be in order to make the net force true. So, see how the net force is giving us a direction? Right, we want a direction with this. So since it's telling us to the right, that means the top and bottom have to equal. So that's why I'm putting two little equal signs. So that means they will not come into play. So if I have 12 up, I would need to have 12 down. All right, again, we're just trying to figure out what they need to be in order to make this true. So that means since it's going to the right, that means the right side needs to be 3 newtons greater than the left side. Therefore, it would be 15. And you can always go back and try and double quick, double check. 15 minus 12 is 3. And since this side is bigger, the net force, yes, would be to the right. Okay, going to this one. Net force is 40 to the left. Again, they're not talking up and down, so these two have to be equal. Therefore, this one's 45. Nothing needed there. 60 to the left, blank to the right. What would the right need to be in order to make this true? Well... The left side is 60. It needs to be 40 greater than this side. So if this is 20, now let me double check. 60 minus 20 is 40. And since the left side is larger in magnitude, magnitude just means like the number. Since it's larger in magnitude, yes, it would go to the left. So this is good. That works. Mm -hmm. Well, so it, that's all right. So if you thought... Just for example, if you did think it was 100 or you weren't sure, if you wrote 100, because 100 minus 60 will give you 40, but then which side is bigger? The right side. But look where the net, they're telling us the net force needs to be the left. So that means the left side needs to be greater. So that's why it couldn't be 100. It's all right. Hey, you're smart, man. Go with the gut. Here, 15 newtons up. So since they're talking up, that means left and right have to be equal. So I have 80 to the right. I would need 80 to the left. And since this is 15 up, this guy needs to be 15 larger than the bottom. So 75 minus 15 would give me 60. Make sense? Okay, I'm just going to skip over 22. Um, this one, they're telling us it needs to be 8 newtons to the right. So that means the uh, these top and bottom need to be balanced. The top and bottom needs to be balanced. Now, you can't just put zero because they actually have a vector. So that means they they actually have to be a number, but they both have to be the same. So you can pick whatever your favorite number is. So if your favorite number, for example, was 22 newtons, you'd have to have 22 newtons up and 22 newtons down. Again, the right side needs to be bigger than the left side by eight. So that would mean this guy would have to be 92. Okay, the back side is essentially the same thing. They're saying, dude has a, all right, two vectors, same direction. We add these two, gives us 1,200 newtons down. If he's standing dead center on a, 
all right, on this board, and each side of the board is placed on a scale. So everything's basically split down the center. All right, if I have 1,200 newtons down and the dude is at rest, we need to have 1,200 newtons going up. So 600 and 600. Cut it right in half. Another thing, all right, that's in the notes, mechanical equilibrium basically means that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Equilibrium basically means like it's cool, it's chilling, it's not going to change. So the only you, you can be in mechanical equilibrium one of two ways. The object's at rest or it's in a straight line at a constant speed, which we call constant velocity. So if something's not moving, everything has to be balanced. So the total force is up, I have to equal the total forces down. So if I have 1,200 down, I need to have 1,200 up. Boom. Cool. Same thing. Add these two together. That's 1,200 minus 850. 350 plus 850 would give me 1,200 up. All right. Uh, 12 down and 20 down. What is that? 32 tons down minus 13. 19 tons. Here they tell you that the weight... All right, also, it's going to be mentioned at some point, weight is an object's mass times gravity. So an object's mass is the constant. It doesn't change no matter where you go. So if I just teleport a magic to the moon, your mass, you're going to be the exact same person, the exact same object. It's the same mass. But because gravity is different, your weight changes. So this is the force of gravity on an object. We also call it weight. So the force of gravity or weight on an object is the mass times gravity. So a very uh, simple and corny joke, what's a quick way to lose weight? Go to the moon. Why? Because gravity is less there. So you would quote unquote weigh less. What you actually want to lose is mass. Okay. So with that being said, they said a thousand newton crate. That's so that's basically telling us the weight. Now, if we knew what the weight is, we could throw this into a triangle. You should know that gravity is ten. So if they told us that the weight is a uh, thousand and thousand newtons and gravity is ten meters per second squared. Dividing out, this will give us M. So the, this crate is actually going to be just 100 kilograms. So that's how you can find the weight or mass of something if you're given the weight, which will be something you use definitely on the test. All right, so weight of the crate, 1,000. And they tell us the weight of this block is 500. But they also say everything is at rest. So that means everything has to balance. So the weight down has to equal the weight up, all right? Or the force down has to equal the force up. So we have 1,000 down. We have to have 1,000 going up. 500 down, we need to have 500 going up. Now, this cable, therefore, has a tension force, which is like a, a stretching force. And that's the same at any single point. So if I was like, what's the tension right here? What's the tension right here? What's the tension right here? It's all 500. So this is 500 newtons. Now these two right here balance each other, right? Now basically I have 500 to the right. I would need friction here to be 500 in order for the whole thing to be chilling. All right, to make sure the force or the the net force is zero. Now they ask, okay, uh, if the crate and block were moving at a constant speed, what would the tension be? It'd be the same. It would be the same, all right? Why? Because it's saying constant speed. Now we're assuming it's moving in a straight line that it's not going to just like start turning, okay? Uh, so therefore, it would be the same. And if it's sliding and it's moving at a constant speed, if it's sliding and it's moving at a constant speed, then it, it will be in a state of dynamic equilibrium. So dynamic equilibrium is when the net force is equal to zero but the object is still moving. So that can happen. Static is basically this thing is at rest and the net force is equal to zero. 
dynamic means it's moving at a constant uh, velocity. And constant velocity means, can you shut that door? Can you shut the, that door for me? And so constant velocity means uh, str constant speed in a straight line. All right, so that takes care of a few different things there. Then there is this worksheet here. All right, again, this is talking is like a group worksheet that we went over. Forces are vector quantities. What does vector quantities mean? All right, something that has both a magnitude and direction. We represent them with arrows. Okay, uh, the unit that in physics that we use for force is capital N, which is the Newton. I'm not writing everything out just because it's going to take forever. Um, the term net force is the sum of all the forces. All right, sum of all the forces, the mathematical symbol for net force. So if the sum of the forces is equal to zero, that's called the equilibrium rule. We will use F subscript, the word net, in order to give our net force here. Same thing as before. If they wanted, if you, you were given just one force, if only one force is acting on an object, that is the net force. So here the net force is three newtons to the left. Same thing before, opposite directions, we subtract. So eight minus three is five, and which side had the greater number? The right, so we would say it's five newtons to the right. Here, two arrows, same direction, you add them. So three and five is eight, so we would have eight to the left, but over here we also have eight to the right. So if that is the case, then no vectors get drawn, and we would just say that the net force is equal to zero newtons. Uh, we're going to skip over this because this wound up not being on the test. So we're not going to go into this in detail. But essentially, if you just had something that looked like this, you figured out, OK, top and bottom. All right, we have a net force going either up or down, and then a net force either going left and right. Now we have a situation like something like this. So the net force would be somewhere in the middle of the two. And you would have to use this equation to get it. We're not going to go into that in crazy, crazy detail. If the net force on an object is zero, the object's motion does not change. All right. If it's if the net force is greater than zero, what happens? It's going to change, meaning speed up, slow down, or change direction. Speeding up, slowing down, changing direction, all three of those are one are a way that you can change velocity. And then velocity, a change in velocity is an acceleration. So when you have a net force greater than zero, technically the object is accelerating. Whether or not it's moving at a constant speed, all right? You can move at a constant speed, but if you're, let's say, moving in a circle, because you're constantly changing direction, you're changing velocity, therefore it's an acceleration. Um, if an object is in a state of mechanical equilibrium, net force is zero, what happens to the object's state of motion? It's going to keep doing what it was doing, all right? Which basically leads us into Newton's first law. Objects in, at motion, or objects at rest want to stay at rest. Objects in motion want to stay in motion. Now, when he's saying stay in motion, they want to stay at constant speed in a straight line. So let's just say there was no such thing as friction. You rolled the ball on the ground. It's going to just keep going at that same speed, right? If, we, if there was no air resistance, no friction, the ball's going to keep going, same speed, same direction until something gets in its way to stop it or get in the opposite direction to, to slow it down. So this does tie into Newton's laws. Then I believe this thing was, uh, was next talking about what free body diagrams are. So free body diagrams are literally just boxes that have vectors coming off it to represent all of our forces. So this was just like the worksheet that we had done before. All right, and same thing here. What would these guys, what would the missing letters need to be in order to make the net force true? Um, and again, in the notes, they talk about a couple different forces. So if you have a book at rest on a tabletop, this square, this box represents a book. Anything that has mass and is under the influence of gravity has weight. On a flat surface, 
where the object is not moving up or down, all right, we have a force that goes opposite of that, and we call it F subscript capital N, which is the uh, normal force is what we call that. All right, sorry, let me zoom in. The normal force. No. All right, so if it's at rest on a table, all right, then yes, these two are equal. All right, so something is, uh, an egg is falling out of a tree. No air resistance. Well, then just the weight, force of gravity on the object, the weight down. It's going to accelerate down. A flying squirrel, and the next one, is floating down, but it says at a constant velocity. Constant velocity, F net is equal to zero, which means everything has to balance. And since there are no forces that they're talking about left and right, we have our weight down. So that means we have to have a force going opposite that, and it has to be equal in magnitude. So in this case, since we're not on the ground, it's not what we, we wouldn't call it the normal force. We would call it all right, air resistance. All right, so we would say F sub air, air resistance. That's fair. That is fair. OK. Um, Tom, you will uh, keep your mouth quiet as, as I'm uh, going through this. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Yep. All right, so a rightward force is applied to a book in order to move it across a desk. Now, they're saying it has a rightward acceleration. If it's accelerating to the right, all right, that means the net force has to be in the right. So if I push something to the right, it's going to accelerate to the right. If I push something forward, it's going to accelerate forward. Accelerations go in the same direction. So when we draw this, here's my ground. Okay, that's the or the table um, or desk, or whatever. Therefore, we have the fact that it's not moving up or down is cool because that means we have our weight down and our normal force up. Because it's not changing speed, a left or right, or I'm sorry, up or down. Thank you. And now we have the applied force, which we will label as F. All right, so this rightward force, all right, it says a rightward force is applied. So the term we will give here is an applied force. So applied force, F sub APP, which will stand for applied force. And an applied force is a, a push or pull force. So if they're pulling the sled, you can write that. If it's pushing, all right, applied force kind of is going to give you the whole gist of that. Now, another force that we talk about it's in the notes is friction friction is a force that goes always in the opposite direction of motion so if an object's moving to the right friction will be acting to the left make sense okay most of the situations we draw it friction or applied forces will be to the right friction forces will be to the left so we're not given any numbers here but they do tell us that this thing is going to accelerate to the right so it this says consider friction force so this right here, since we drew this arrow bigger, that's going to basically tell us if we were dealing with numbers, this would be the larger number. Top and bottom are balanced. They equal each other out. Since the friction force arrow is smaller than the applied force arrow, that's going to basically tell us, okay, well, whatever I'm looking at, this thing should accelerate to the right. Um, Constant velocity, consider friction forces. All right, so now you're pushing a book, but this time it's moving at a constant speed, constant velocity. And it's moving to the right. All right, well, we have weight down, normal force up, because it's moving to the right, definitely not moving up or down. Right now, these things are balanced. They have to be here. But again, it says constant velocity. So before we wrote that constant velocity means net force is equal to zero. So that means the left and right arrows also have to be the same. So the applied force will need to be the same magnitude as the friction force. So these two would also be equal. So this object, even though all, right, all the forces are, are balanced, left, right, up, down, 
some people will say, all right, it means it's definitely in a state of equilibrium, which means the, the forces add up to zero, net force is zero, and it's not going to change whatever it's doing. Now, if you had, if you just looked at the picture and no words, you would not tell me, you couldn't tell me whether or not this thing was moving or not. But because this thing is telling us that it is moving at a constant velocity, okay, cool, this thing is moving to the right in a straight line, constant speed. Okay, we have some other stuff in there, but these are the, those are the main gists. We talked about Newton's first law, and then that was um, objects in motion want to stay in motion, objects at rest want to stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force, so a net force greater than zero. All right, so that's obviously what we were just dealing with there. Um, friction is going to be the thing that stops all right, these objects. If we didn't have friction on Earth, we'd have a really big problem. All right, because imagine the ground had no friction. Neither did your shoes. How the heck are you going to move and walk? Couldn't, right? It would be basically like you'd be floating in outer space. And you'd try and do the motion of walking, but there's nothing to push off against, so there's nothing to push you forward. That gets into Newton's third law. Newton's second law is telling us that the net force on an object is equal to the mass times the acceleration, or the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. So what this means is acceleration is directly proportional to the net force since it's on top. So if it, uh, the force increases, the acceleration increases. If the force decreases, the acceleration is going to decrease. Okay. Now, if I that's with a constant mass. Now, if I don't change the force, right? So if I like push a kid on the swing with one arm as hard as I can, if I push a little kid, they're going to accelerate. If I push again, this one hand as hard as I can uh, against a, you know a grown adult with a much bigger mass, they're not going to accelerate as much. So that is inversely proportional. So as mass increases, the acceleration goes down. Decreases. Make sense? Okay. So here, it just wanted us to determine the magnitude and direction of the net force. So you have 100 up, 100 down, equal. 20 left, 20 right, equal. Here, F net is zero. You have 400 up, 150 down. Uh, so subtract those. What is that? 250? Right? 400 minus 150. Yeah. 250. So the F net would equal 250 newtons. And which direction? Up. T is a tension force. So like that was one of the ones we maybe didn't go over before. It's not as common as the other ones that we use, but it is a force. All right. Similar top and bottom balance. 250 to the right. 75 to the left. So you have 250 right, 75 left, which gives us uh, 175 newtons to the right. And why is it to the right? Because, yeah, this side's bigger. Okay, same things are going on here. Now, the equations are up at the top that had mass and um, net force. That's the net force. So you basically simplify this if you can to try and find the net force. Great. If you're given both mass and acceleration, you can use the equation in the triangle to find that. So 40 times 4 is 160 newtons. All right. And since the acceleration is to the right, that means the net force had to be to the right. So that means this force here needed to be 160 newtons greater than this one. So 200 minus 160 uh, will give this thing 40 newtons. And if you're ever given mass, you can find F sub G. Always F sub G, weight, mass times gravity, 40 times 10, 400 newtons. And these two would have to be the same. And the reason I know that is because the net force is telling me to the right not up or down, so those two would have to balance. And that's essentially kind of how you would have to go about this, all right? Given the enough information to find uh, one or two of the missing things, and then using either your knowledge of net force and the triangles at the top, you should be able to 
complete those.